Hey everybody, I'm coming making this video message and I want to tell you, walk by the Spirit. I'm going to say it again, walk by the Spirit. The reason why I'm making this video message, my beautiful brothers and sisters, is to tell you all that your life would change drastically once you begin to walk in the Spirit and not walk in the flesh. All of us, every last one of us, if you're living and breathing, uh, we are guilty of walking in the flesh. Some do it more than others, but at the end of the day, in either thought, word, or deed, we walk in the flesh sometimes. But the deeper we go into God, the more that we pray, and the more that we keep our minds on God, you will find um, you will slowly start to transform and you will walk in your flesh less and less and less. I was reading the book of Galatians uh, chapter 5 today. So when you all get the availability, I want you to go read it for yourself. But the book of Galatia was written by Paul. And he wrote this epistle to the church of Galatia. Um, and an epistle is just a letter. I believe Paul, if I'm not mistaken, he wrote 12 or 13 epistles. In this particular epistle, he was breaking down all the works of the flesh. And he was also talking about, and I'm paraphrasing, but he was basically saying that the hope for righteousness, um, we will get it by faith. And so that just in a nutshell means that when we wait on God, when we believe that he is who he say he is, by our faith alone, over time, we will have the spirit of righteousness on us and within us. And so if you pay attention to actions of the flesh, you all will realize that once we walk into our flesh, it doesn't really require us to take a lot of accountability or responsibility. It is very, very easy to walk in the flesh versus walking in the spirit. Because when we walk into the flesh, or when we walk, I'm sorry, in the flesh, um, we are not really thinking of how it can change the situations for the worse. We are not really mindful of how destructive walking in the flesh can be we don't have to practice discipline when we walk in our flesh and so in this video message i want all of you all to understand that we have to get to a place where walking in our flesh is something that we put behind us especially if we want to see major changes come into our lives for the better. Let me give you guys some examples of how it's very easy to walk in the flesh and it doesn't require you to do a lot of thinking. Let's say someone wakes up and they say, um, I'm going to have an affair. Maybe an opportunity was presented to you and you're having trouble in your life as a single man or woman but you come across someone who is married you're very attracted to them or they're attracted to you and the opportunity presents itself for you to have that affair walking in your flesh in that situation you're not going to think about that married man or woman spouse you probably won't care about how hurt that spouse would be if they found out about the affair you probably are not looking at all the things that could go wrong in that affair you're not thinking about how it could possibly jeopardize your safety it could possibly put you in a position where your very life is taken from you you are probably not thinking about children that would be hurt you're probably not thinking about the financial strain that it will put on you or that spouse because if the spouse um finds out about the affair, if they file for a divorce and they have to go to court, there's a lot of money that's going to be spent filing for that divorce. It may cost you a lot of money because some instances where someone has had an affair, that spouse has come after the outside man or woman and destroyed their property. 
And so they had to spend money to repair or replace something if the court didn't get involved or they got hurt physically some type of way. It cost them something. And I'm just saying that not to condemn anybody, but that is a very, very great example of how easy it is to walk into the flesh. That particular act of having an affair, um, it's easy and it's simple and people don't really too much care about it because it's coming from a place of selfishness and when you're selfish you only care about yourself you don't consider the feelings and the thoughts or the situations of other people another great example is this say someone approaches you maybe you're in the workplace maybe it's someone in your family that is very volatile or combative you may be out in public, minding your business, shopping, or going to the movies, or something of that nature. And someone bumps you, or someone takes a parking spot that you were about to park in, or someone jumps ahead of you to get a card and pushes you out the way. Various things go on, or a family member is talking crazy to you, and they're disrespecting you, calling you out of your name. If you walk in your flesh, you may also begin to curse them out. You may say things to hit them below the belt because you want to embarrass, humiliate, and shame them. You may want to say certain things to them to make them cry because they hurt you and offended you by things they're saying to you. You don't look at, okay, if I'm saying this particular thing to a family member, it could lead into us getting into a physical fight. I don't care about what I'm saying to this person out here in public because they jumped in front of me to get a spot that they saw me about to turn into. I don't care about that. They disrespected me. It's all about me, me, me. I'm at work. My coworker is talking crazy to me. They keep getting in my face. I don't have time for this. I'm about to curse this person out. I'm about to call them out of their name. I don't care about how it makes them feel. I don't care about what they think. I'll take the punishment and get rolled up. If I get fired, oh well. But they're going to know when I get done with them, verbally, they're going to know not to mess with me. They're going to know not to play with me. It's still coming from a flesh move and it's still coming from a place of selfishness you are thinking about how you feel you are thinking about how that person is making you feel and so to stop it you will bite back you will verbally attack them and say certain things to them and so today i am telling you all learn um i'm sorry learn to walk in the spirit Walking in the spirit takes more discipline, like I said. It takes you to really sit with yourself. Sometimes in a split second, you have to really think things through and say, you know what? This person is cussing at me. They're yelling at me. They're calling me out of my name. Now, this could go either way. It could go totally left where I start to bite their head off too. I curse them out. I call them out of their name. But What's going to happen once I bite back? Is it going to lead to us having a physical fight? Is it going to lead to them putting their hands on me? Or will I get so angry I put my hands on them? Are other people going to get involved and it's going to turn into an even bigger verbal or physical altercation? Okay, I could snap off on this coworker at work, but it could lead to me getting fired. It could lead to me getting suspended without pay. It could lead to me getting rolled up and that write-up being put in my file. And when they start looking around and searching for promotion, they look at my file and see that and they don't consider me because I have now a reputation of being difficult, problematic, and a hothead. I'm telling you all, when you walk in the spirit, you begin to weigh everything. You begin to care and show more concern about those around you. You begin to care about the position you're in. You begin to care about the title you hold at the job or in the church or the position you're in in the family. You may be the one in the family that is educated or, you know, you have the money or you're the oldest and you handle everything. But if you allow your flesh to take over, and you fight with that family member, or you hurt or harm them, you could be sent to prison. 
And then there's another breakdown of your bloodline. These are very serious things. And I don't know which one of you all I am talking to, but today under the unction of the spirit, I am telling you all, begin to fight and become more disciplined walking in the spirit and not in your flesh. If you all overlook the course of your life, there have probably been a lot of things that have kicked off and you walked in your flesh and you have lost so many things. You have lost opportunities. You have lost jobs. You have lost a relationship where you were deeply in love with someone because something arose, but instead of walking in the spirit and being calm, and being patient and not being selfish, you immediately acted off how you felt in your emotions and not in your spirit. You did not allow God to take over and keep you at peace. Peace was not still. And so now doors have closed. You've lost beautiful friendships. You've lost a home, cars. Certain people don't want to work with you. They don't trust themselves to be around you because they don't know what you're really capable of. They don't want to be associated with you. If for a large part of your life, you have been walking in your flesh. Before I end this video message, I want to tell you all, you will start to see sometimes immediate changes when you walk in the spirit. One thing about the enemy, the enemy loves for us to do a lot of things but one of the main things is when we walk in the flesh because when we walk in the flesh it leaves a door open for him to get in and even bring other demons with him and so if there's a struggle or a vulnerability there now it's heightened 10 20 100 times over and it will become more and more difficult for you to walk by the spirit in everything I want you all to think about how much easier and how much better your life would be once you handle people and situations by the spirit when problems arise. Just think about that for a minute. Restoration comes to you. You become a more honest person when you walk by the spirit and not in your flesh. Because let me tell you all something, when you walk in the flesh and you are greedy of gain or you're underhanded, you will go to whatever end to get a dollar. You will. You will. A lot of people will do it. They don't have the integrity. They will see an opportunity for them to take advantage of somebody, to take money from them. They will lie and falsify documentation to get a dollar. But when you walk by the spirit, you can say, okay, I'm struggling. I am in poverty. I need money to buy my children and myself some things, but I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to trust God instead of lying on this paperwork to get a dollar or instead of praying on someone that is vulnerable and manipulating them to get money from them and lying to them. Then I'm going to walk by the spirit and I'm going to pray and I am going to wait up on the Lord because all of my help comes from him. I want you all to get to this place in your life and know when you walk by the spirit, it's not going to happen overnight. But the more that you put things that you're battling with in your flesh at the feet of God you will start to see a turnaround. Take it from a woman who at one point, when it came to a lot of things, I walked by the flesh. I've shared with you all before, but I'm gonna share with you all again. There have been many situations in my life where a flesh move for me was biting someone's head off verbally. And to this day, I find myself in certain situations, I could still go there with people, but it's not at the level that it used to be. Baby, it was at a worse level, but every day God makes me better. Every day I put that on the altar. I put my attitude. I put my temper. And it's not that naturally 
freestanding that I am a confrontational person, but I am the type of person because I am not problematic, because I am not argumentative, when someone comes to me and they approach me a certain way or they say certain things to me, then I will react depending on what it is that they're saying, especially if that person is a liar, if they are a slanderer, see stuff like that, I don't do well with. But all thanks be to God, every day I get better and better and better. And you will too, once you walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. A lot of things that you have grown accustomed to doing, walking so comfortably in the flesh, it will change. It will change. A lot of people who don't mean you well, they will fall off from your life when you do things by the spirit. Because see, when you walk by the flesh, a lot of people hang around you. You got a lot of friends. A lot of people love you. A lot of people respect you. They're comfortable around you because you're operating the same way they operate. But baby, when I tell you, when you start walking by the spirit, you are going to see immediately that you know what people around you they grow very uncomfortable with you because they know you know what I can't say this around him or her I can't do this particular thing around him or her they're different now I can't go to him or her and start talking crazy because you know what they're going to ignore me they're going to be quiet they're going to say something to me to force me to come up to a level where I handle things at the level they handle it. I'm not going to be able to just yell at them and curse at them. When I tell y'all this is what's going to begin to happen to you when you are around other people, trust me when I tell you. And sometimes, you know what, they'll do a bait and switch on you where you will spend time with certain family members or certain friends and you will start to tell them, no, that's not how you need to handle that situation. You need to do it like this or do it like that. They'll try to flip it around and act like they schooled you on it. They'll try to act like you're at that level because of them and they taught you. But the whole time you've been patient with them and talking to them for several months. This, this is how things begin to change. When you walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. So again, read Galatians chapter 5. It will really bless you. And that is the video message. Well, guys, it's time for me to go because I have some other things to do. The Lord will and I will be back with another video message. If any one of you have taken offense to anything I spoke about in this video message, it's okay. It's all right. I'm not worried about it. I am not concerned because I know you will forgive me in the morning.